Hey guys, uh, it's Chris here, Head Hunter Fishing, sitting here at the desk uh, editing videos. Uh, but for the first time, I think, in my short YouTube career, my intro video that I created uh, disappeared. But I want to kick this video off. Uh, we did a, a FSFA meeting last night, and that's uh, for these of you that don't know, is uh, my wife Casey, aka Trophy Wife, is on the board for the Florida Sport Fishing Association. Uh, it's a Brevard County based fishing club, it's been around for over 50 years. Well, uh, it was a pretty cool uh, event because um, uh, we got George Poveromo from World of Saltwater Fishing, Sport Fishing Magazine, um, and his uh, seminar that he does. So uh, I've been doing it for over 30 years, come out and speak with us. And I got the pleasure of cooking uh, barbecue for the event. So it is pretty good and it all culminated from um, back when we did uh, the Bahamas and Back Tournament of Fish with a bunch of buddies. We ended up having dinner um, at the Green Turtle Club, um, and lo and behold, who's having dinner next to us? <laughs> George was. Uh, so we went over and talked to him, and I invited him to come uh, speak at the club. It took a few months to, to coordinate and get it uh, in play, but uh, he had committed there on the spot uh, at Green Turtle. And uh, last night, we got to host him uh, here in Melbourne uh, at an event. So. Um, question remains, you know, between now and, and the end of video is, is uh, did uh, I make George Poveromo sick or did I, I get two thumbs up from my amazing cooking? Uh, we, we had over a hundred uh, people come out for the club last night. We, uh, we made, did pulled pork, chicken, baked beans, smoked mac and cheese, coleslaw, and Lord knows we had a lot of desserts, but it was a great event. Um, glad George uh, came out and George, I can't thank you enough for speaking at the event and uh, we look forward to a great lineup of speakers in 2023, uh, including uh, we got uh, Bill from Jacked Up Fishing coming, we got Mike D from Jetty Rocks Fishing, it uh, looks like we're gonna have Bouncer Smith, we got Joey Antonelli, uh, we got uh, a few people that might have even uh, give me some, some tentatives, I, I won't drop names because I don't have them on the books, but we got some pretty strong uh, guys coming up, including some real uh, legends in the in the sport, but also some you know pretty uh, notable YouTube guys too. So it's pretty exciting what uh, the club's going to do for 2023. So if you guys haven't uh, checked it out, it's fsfa dot uh, I'm sorry fsfa dot org. Uh, check them out. Uh, we have meetings uh, twice a month: once in Merritt Island, once in Melbourne, and uh, we always have a great guest speaker, raffles, good food and a uh, great time to get together and socialize and talk what's biting and uh, tell a few fishing stories too. So check out the club. Um, you know, if you're not a member, you should consider joining and uh, look forward to uh, making this video. And I'm glad, uh, you know, things went well and George can't thank you enough. Thanks again. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Here's uh, me starting to cook. Hey guys, back in the kitchen. Uh, we're gonna rub these butts. Um, I generally just go buy whatever's in the store. Um, I probably should be a little more consistent with my rubs, but we're using Killer Hogs Barbecue. Barbecue rub to rub it. And then a friend of mine, uh, Chris uh, Benavidez, uh, taught me that always dust it with Old Bay too because it gives it that extra little kick. So uh, basically, what we're doing here, we got two store-bought butts but then this is if you guys watched the video this is one of the hams off of one of the wild hogs that uh, myself and Casey uh, trophy wife uh, took in South Carolina so we're gonna smoke it along uh, with it and basically you know like any barbecue rub you just don't skimp cover it make sure you get all sides take the old bay Dust it with Old Bay too. And so what you do is you rub it, and then basically with these, you know, you want to get all of it, all sides. This is going to make some amazing pulled pork. Get it on the smoker here shortly. Cook it all day. Hopefully, we don't uh, poison George Poveromo. He actually enjoys it, so. One thing I love to do just about as much as fishing. Well, I don't know. Fishing's also a disease. <laughs> but um, I definitely love uh, barbecuing. It's a lot of fun. And um, we get all this stuff rubbed in, get it fully coated. Don't skimp on it. 
and then we're gonna put it on the smoker once all these things are rubbed. More to come. Now guys, one little secret that I do with my butts. Oh great, I got a jet taken off. Barking dogs and jets taking off. So what I was getting at guys is um, I do this on my ribs a lot too. Um, it's kind of the secret to keep them moist. And then also, um, not just moist, but um, kind of sweet. Cause I like everything kind of a little bit sweet. So basically this is a injector. You get it with um, when you do turkeys and stuff. And basically what I do is just take it and inject it with the apple juice. And uh, make sure it stays good and sweet. So it's wanting to actually act up a little bit. So, so I'm great. I broke the needle. So, but you guys got to see one of them. Basically, take it, eject it in there. I'm gonna go get another needle and finish this thing off. But um, fill it up full of apple juice on the inside one before you put it on the smoker, and it uh, makes it uh, keeps it tender, uh, juicy, and uh, make sure your pork have a little sweet tang to it. Hey guys, I'm back. I actually, um, I got had that um, baser from a turkey I made the other day, but I do have one. It's actually an industrial strength needle, so I went and got it out of the cupboard. So yeah, go back, just fill a tube up, and you just don't skimp on this stuff, and just, you can actually literally, if, I don't know if you can see it in the video on these uh, butts, but they are literally just plumping up. You know, swelling up as, as I squeeze this juice in it. And I tell you what, guys, it's a little trade secret. And it makes all the world in a difference with these butts, making them good. So, we'll get them all juiced up. One more. guys that's it now smoker it's actually cooking a little bit hot so we're gonna go ahead and close the fire vent there a little bit ideally we want this right at that blue and the red line right at like 225 we'll go ahead and close this up um, but once we put the meat on there too it's going to um, uh, I guess we could put it up on top. It's two. And here comes number three. Put that one right between them two. That's where they'll sit for a few hours, guys. We're gonna lock it up. Temperatures now. A little over 200 and then what's critical is the next 20 minutes to a half an hour coming and adjusting these top vents up here adjusting the firebox down below getting it good um, and I'm also gonna come add some wood over here in a minute too all right guys real quick we got the wood battery's gonna die on this thing so if you're not using wood to smoke you're just grilling so let's get some of this wood put in here on top of the charcoal and we'll get this uh, these butts smoking and um, like I said in a few hours we'll bring them out we'll foil them and we'll put them on the Traeger let them finish all right more to come guys hey guys we're back smoker still cooking we just stoked the fire up a little bit we're gonna go round two here in a minute and get the chicken going a little bit but butts have been on here for three hours looking wonderful we'll go ahead and get these pulled off I'm going to wrap them in foil and then get them on the Traeger to finish cooking for another five hours. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap them up one at a time. Get them 
I'm gonna just wrap them so they're good and sealed. Not gonna flip these, they're just gonna literally just sit on the Traeger. Just like that, we're gonna walk them out here. Smoker's getting fired up for the chicken. There's the Traeger. We're gonna lay these jokers right there. Let them go for another five hours, so a total of eight hours, and they should be ready to pull. And um, yeah, that's a lot of work today, but it should be good. More to come. All right, guys. Got all the chicken done. Well, I pulled the pork off the Traeger and put the chicken on there. Now it's the smoke mac. Put the beans back on. Let them go for a little while. We'll stoke the fire up. I got my helper today. This is my neighbor, Caden. He's helping me out today. So we're going to get some more wood on the fire here. Pick it up. Thanks to my niece Allison, she happened to have some oak for me. I'll get that thrown in there to get the smoked mac and cheese some good flavor. All right, gonna let the temperature come back up on that thing. There's Ellie Mae coming to say hi. Some of our chicken, but we got some chicken. So looks good. Caden bailed on me. He's going inside. <laughs> But no, we're still cooking away for this uh, FSFA meeting. Hope, uh, hopefully all the food's good. It's gonna should be a great turnout, but um, we're on schedule. More to come, guys. All right, guys, pork pulling time. Um, this is the wild ham that we did. And uh, as you can see, it's just falling apart. But I wanted to show you guys a little uh, trick that, uh, once again, Chris, who uh, told you about on the rub, taught me about, but using this, use the beater. Standard home beater, and in just seconds, got pulled pork. Hmm, it's on time, guys. All right, more to come. Hey guys, back at the Traeger. What's up, Hitch? Boom dogs hanging out, helping us make chicken. So pulling all this chicken off. Haven't sampled it yet, but I did try some of the pulled pork. As you saw, it was pretty tasty. Um, yeah, hopefully this stuff's a hit. Um, shit looks looks done, looks good. Look smoke, so smoker's still roaring here. Got the big beans, smoked mac and cheese on there. We're gonna have us a feast tonight. Um, get this chicken off the grill, get it wrapped up in foil, get it loaded in the truck, and we're gonna head to uh, Front Street Park for the FSFA meeting. Hopefully we uh, get a thumbs up from George Poveromo. Head Hunter Barbecue, more to come. Hi guys. Got it all set up. Sneak peek on the pork. But Mike with some raffles. There's there's the man of the hour. George, thank there you for you coming, are. sir. Hey, you turned the AC on for me. Yeah. You got the cold front up here. I didn't even bring a jacket. You gotta remember, I'm from South Florida. <laughs> so the question is, is George gonna give me two Hi, thumbs up when he eats the barbecue? I've, I gave you a uh, one and a half thumb just by looking at it. So I think getting two thumbs is going to be a piece of cake. Awesome. Well, good deal. Well, thank you for coming, for speaking tonight, Glad George. Glad to do it. Glad and, I had um, a break in action and come up in here and about some barbecue and tell some fish stories and whatever else happens. A couple of eyes, too, probably. I'll throw a couple of them in there, too. Just watch my nose, see if it grows. All right. <laughs> good deal, guys. You'll be the best of the fish stories. <laughs> All right, guys. Like and subscribe. Headhunter Fishing. we got George Poveromo in the house. All right, guys, more to come. I'm putting Mike, what you're doing. I'm putting Mike Pratt and Yamo on the video. I thought you were videoing yourself eating. No. All right, this is a pork under each Chicken. <laughs> Smoked mac and cheese. Smoked mac and cheese. Big beans. Coleslaw. And a little 
Sweet Baby Ray's. All right, we got it all cooking. Everybody's starting to eat. Let's see if it's edible. All right, he's actually getting a plate of food. Well, that's what I've heard about this barbecue, so I'm gonna be a judge on this one. All right, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how it plays out. I have not, what are they? They're peanut butter balls. Like, they're yeah. They're unbelievable, dude. So good. Oh, those are dangerous. Do you need to see a doctor about that? Yes. Uh, all right, George, let me know how it is once you get it. And that, that's your specialty she told me about. That is. So, if, uh, I mean, enjoy. If I fall asleep up there, it's <laughs> a good deal. We're not going to fall asleep in this crowd. Let me tell you. All you right. put all this together? I did. Wow, that's great. So, this is the man right here that taught me about 75, 80% of everything I know about offshore fishing. This You've is, gone a long way, son, since then. This is the legend, Rico. <laughs> crank, crank it, don't yank it. <laughs> Love me some Rico. Everything's going good with the food. Great turnout tonight. First Sunday of January, 8 in the morning, and we run January through June. It's the year 23 for the TV series, so hard to believe we're not that long. But. Over right. to you, sir. Oh, that, that was a quick ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun to be out, and, and they see a lot of, I, I don't want to say old faces, but I'll say familiar faces <laughs> that go way, way, way back here. And before I even start to get into the meeting, I've got to recognize one person who's been a long friend of mine, longtime friend, who I believe was responsible for starting this club, at least with the idea of getting it going. Bill Sargent, Woo. Florida today, and uh, Bill is, you know, I'm in the riding business, I've been with Saltwater Sportsman Magazine for a number of years, and there's certain riders that are the true heavyweights, and then you have just regular riders. Bill Sargent is amazing, he was one of the big key name riders that you could not wait to read, whether you read him in his uh, paper here, or the occasional work that he did with Florida Sportsman, which is a bad word because I'm with saltwater sportsmen, but um, Bill was a true gentleman, and so I told him, I said, I noticed it's your club, Bill. You had this idea and you started, so I'm gonna make you proud tonight. So Bill Sargent is a heck of a guy, and you have a super outdoor rider in your hands here, so I have to recognize Bill Sargent. And how I ended up here, just so you know, if you hadn't heard the story, we were over at the Green Turtle Club shooting an episode, for our 2023 season. And uh, perfect weather, we're really doing well. And uh, so it might have been the, the second to last night before we were set to go, we wrap up our fishing. We're, we're in the Green Turtle Club restaurant. And I have a video on my production team, just a little bit. And then in comes this group from the fishing club here. And I don't know whether it's an actual your fishing club event or was with a combination, whatever, but a whole lot of folks came and they're sitting at the table next to us. And as we're all eating, and I'm seeing all these stairs starting to come over to our table. When you see stairs from another table looking at your table, it's not giving you a good sign. So anyway, uh, thanks to Chris, he came over and uh, you know, would not let me enjoy my dinner until I committed to come talk to the club tonight. So Chris, <laughs> every time this, uh, and I learned on that one that if we're back at Green Turtle, anywhere in the Bahamas, and and the same club comes back in again, I'm going to order room service. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, getting to a couple of things here, just so you know too, is when we're uh, finished up here, I brought some extra door prizes, uh, uh, line of Starbright products. Uh, we have uh, Startron, you can put in uh, your fuel and and then I have Papa's Bar Rum, which is the gold people add here. So that's a winner or two. And uh, everything goes but the rod and wheels. These are my props, so don't be no dear much. So anyway, I'm thinking of what would be a good one to talk to about the club. And so we figure, right, I know you have a good amount of offshore anglers here. So I figured, let's go ahead and talk about uh, dolphin. And uh, here's a fish that was so used to be easy to catch because the numbers used to be so abundant. But over the years for overfishing, on our behalf too, you know, we're all guilty of it, have been guilty of it. Then you get an intense netting and long lining in the Caribbean for these fish. Then as you get up to North Florida, and particularly up North Carolina, 
they stole a long line for dolphin. There's a, uh, a long line fishery at North Carolina that just targets these fish. So these fish get beat up every single which way, where it's become a lot harder now, uh, to, or I should say challenging, to go ahead and actually cash in on finding these fish. So if we could dim the lights just a little bit here, I'm gonna get on some um, visuals here that I wanna show you. All right, guys, I'll catch up on the video here at the end. Okay, we've got, we got a tumbler here for you. I did not. You didn't? Okay. <laughs> this is our, our typical FSFA uh, tumbler. And we got you one of our fancy new shirts. Well, I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so two thumbs up or one thumb down for the barbecue? The barbecue has to be definitely two thumbs up because if I thought it was only one thumb, I would never admit it with this kind of group because they're all your people here. So I'm going to get out of here safely. No, two thumbs up, phenomenal barbecue. It really was. Awesome. So. You hear that headhunter fishing? My barbecue is uh, George Poveromo approved. Sorry, guys. Like and subscribe. Thank you. More to come.